today I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 12 verses 1 to 11. Now, about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the spirit, the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Now, I love hearing about unlikely friendships when two people from very different backgrounds, cultures, age groups or circumstances come together to form genuinely life-giving friendship. A few years ago, the New York Times reported on a story that went viral simply because it was so unlikely. A 22-year-old man and an 81-year-old woman connected with each other online through the game Words with Friends. It was photos of this unlikely pair at their first meeting, different along the lines of colour, age and gender that blew up Twitter. This friendship was made possible because they had one thing in common, and it was this game. That word, common, often comes along when we're thinking about dealing with conflict. We talk about finding common ground. Now, common ground is a term for land which can be used and accessed by the general public in a number of ways that are fairly unrestricted. It's open for people to walk across unhindered and without fences. We have a great example of a common right here in Peckham. It's called Peckham Rye Common. It's right opposite where I live, and it seems that at pretty much all hours of the day, there is someone there out exercising, walking their dog, cycling through, playing sport, or just sitting with friends. But right next to the common is Peckham Rye Park, and this is not common land. It's a place with very clear boundaries. There are signs that tell you where you cannot go with your dog. There are closing times when the gates to the park are locked and visitors are kept out. I can say this with certainty because my friend and I were locked in the park in November when the closing times had changed and become earlier for winter. We cycled around the park looking for an area where the gates weren't locked. Instead, we had to rely on help from a kind passerby who was able to lift our bikes over the railings while we climbed over. Finding common ground is about stepping away from the territories we've formed around us and our views. We get to a place where neither party can claim, this is where I stand, but instead, this is where we stand. We can disagree well by making what we share our starting point. And this is what Paul does here with the church in Corinth. One of their disagreements was on spiritual gifts and the importance 
given to each one of the gifts. There were clearly some in the church who thought that the gifts of the spirit could be ranked from most to least important and as a result had started to do that with members of the church. And so instead of simply starting with all these are the work of one and the same spirit, Paul starts by reminding them of what they have in common. So I'll read verse three. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And I imagine the church hearing this letter and thinking, hmm, well, we've all proclaimed that Jesus is Lord. So I guess that means we must all share that same spirit. It's sometimes said that Jesus himself experiences the pain of unanswered prayer. In John 17, verses 22 to 23, Jesus prays this prayer. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. There continues to be disagreement and disunity across the global church even to this day. So let us be reminded that by making our starting place in addressing our disagreements, um, making that be what we share, and that is the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you gave us your spirit so abundantly. May we recognise your spirit in our brothers and sisters as we together seek to have our hearts and minds transformed by you. May the coming of your kingdom bring the unity you so desire in your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.